supporting this. So we thank you once again. This is a, a very important topic today. And, uh, uh, and, and let me just pray. Father, I thank you today. Father, let the words that come out of my mouth be your words. And may the people hear what, what you need them to hear, Father, this morning as we dive into your shmita in this sort of portion, Bihar on the Mount. And we thank you today for your people. Bless each one. Father, bless the, 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 our, 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 our community here in the Saga and all over the world that are listening to your Torah teaching. This is your Torah. The Holy Spirit is our teacher this morning. And always, we thank you in Yeshua's name. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. So um, it skipped. Uh, right into Jesse, can you make sure that it doesn't uh, skip? So our third portion is is called Behar on the Mount, as uh, we read from Leviticus chapter twenty five. It's only a short Torah portion. It's only almost uh, a chapter and and two verses. And uh, and uh, what's interesting is uh, I can. So Bihar, um, in here, God spells out his economic plan through the Shemitah and uh, the loss of Yovel. So uh, there's an, another uh, misconception because a lot of people think that uh, this, this thing is, uh, is applicable in other countries, but this is only applicable in Israel, in the land of Israel. Why? And we're going to see why, because this is the land of God. This is God's land. Amen. So if you're practicing Shemitah wherever you are, you're thinking that you cannot plant or you cannot harvest if you are outside of Israel. Uh, well and good, but it, it, the, 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 this laws apply in the, the land of Israel. So the, the Torah portion starts, starts out by saying in Leviticus chapter 25, it says, and the Lord spoke to Moses in Mount Sinai. So what's interesting is, you know, uh, the, the word lemor there, or emor, meaning to, to, it's like to say over, to make the people understand. Remember, there is the debar, which is the written word, the Torah, which is never changing. It is static. It is uh, it's the same yesterday, today, and ever. And then and let me talk about lemor. If you can uh, unmute yourself, that would be great. And lemor talks about softness or the ability to for Moses to try to make the word of God and to, for them to understand it for them to accept it why does it have to say that it was spoken at Mount Sinai so again very very interesting why because if you remember there's many commandments that was spoken of in Mount Sinai but but why did why is God zeroing in specifically to the loss of Shemitah and Yovel. Why is he, why is he zeroing it out? Why is it important for God to mention that he spoke it to, to God, that he had spoken it to Moses at Mount Sinai at this particular moment? So, what is the message that God is emphasizing here? Well, it's about Shemitah and to allow the land to lie fallow, meaning to, to, to let it lie idle have a sabbatical year, meaning have a rest. And then remember, there, then he talks about Yovel, which is seven meter cycles, seven times seven will arrive at what, 49. And then on the 50th year. So again, it's, it, we're, gonna, we're gonna look at this more closely, the 50th year, what happened? There is a Jubilee, but what happened on the 50th day? What happened on the 50th day? There was trumpet sound, and then the, the, the revelation, God came down and gave us a Torah. So, so understand that there is the softness or the more the speaking. So Yeshua is our example. So he came the first time. He showed us how we are to apply or live the Torah, to show us how we should be living. And then there is... The, uh, the, the Torah of the word, the, the, the word, and it is a foretaste of what we will be like when he comes to rule and reign as king and priest 
to show us more than 1,000 years of, you know, so meaning the 1,000 year reign of Yeshua. So we're going to talk about that more, more to come. So what is the connection of Shemitah and Mount Sinai? So here, Rashi, uh, another commentator of the Bible, say, or the Torah says, just like the idea of Shemitah was told over Mount Sinai, but not just any day. It was on the 50th day of Shavuot. Remember, they were, they were counting the Omer, as we are every night. And on the 49th day, or, or the 50th day, what happened? God came down. What did they do? They heard the trumpet. They heard the sound of the trumpet. They heard the, uh, the, uh, uh, they heard the, the blowing. And the Jewish people, counting the over what happened, they, was, they were sanctified that day. Mm -hmm. The mountain became holy. It was a magnificent, awesome day. It was the 50th day that, and that, that came and forbidden to plant or to harvest on the, on the 50th day. Why? It was the day when the Torah was given. In Exodus chapter 19, verse 12 to 13, they heard the ram's horn, the sound of the long drawn out blast. It was referring specifically to a ram's horn. Remember in, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in Yom Kippur and also in Rom, uh, Yom Tirua, it is a ram's horn that is used. So this time in Shavuot, but it's talking about Shemitah here. The seven cycles of, of seven will lead to 49. And then, then on the 50th year, as the brother Denzel read, on the 58th year is, is what? Is Jubilee. And when is Jubilee declared? We learned that Jubilee is declared only on, on Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is when, remember in Leviticus chapter, in Luke chapter 4, Yeshua, uh, after he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he went in to the service, the Yom Kippur service, and he read from Isaiah and he said, today this is fulfilled. He declared a Jubilee. So, so Yeshua declared a Jubilee on, on uh, Yom Kippur. So what is unique about Yom Kippur, the shofar blowing? It is blown in a, in a mobile or moving, it's a moving, uh, you know, when we blow the shofar, we're not standing still, we are moving. It's a moving uh, symbolic of, trans, you know, of people being transported or, or, or movement from one place to another. So not only are we talking about uh, drawing forth freedom, but it's also based on the sound of the shofar. When they heard the sound of the shofar, it was God calling them. In Exodus chapter 30, 32, uh, well, well it, it says there that um, the tablets were, actually that's Exodus chapter 32, verse 16. That it's not Leviticus 25. Now the tablets were God's word, isn't it? In verse 16, Exodus chapter 32, verse 16, the tablets were the works of God and the writing was the writing of God graven upon tablets. The Hebrew word for graven there is the word sharut. Say that sharut. Salut. means engraved or etched. But what's interesting about that word is connected to the word karat. Say that karat. Karat. Karat means freedom or liberty. So now, what is he talking about? The 10 statements or the 10 commandments where God wrote it. Remember, Moses had to bring a stone, a, a tablet, because he broke the, the sapphire one and, and, and God asked Moses to bring it. Then what did God do? He wrote, he inscribed or he, he etched, he engraved the 10 words, the 10 phrases. It is, it is God who inscribed the words. The words in green in, in tablets is again the word karut. And it means, uh, it also can mean karat, which means freedom. So what, is that, what does that mean then? So, so what God is saying is that the, 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 our, when God gave us the Torah, when God gave us his commandment, it is really for us to give us freedom for this for, for freedom uh true freedom comes when we 
follow or study and live the Torah. That is where true freedom comes. So what does that mean? So again, it's a, it's a play. It's, a, it's, it's, it's almost like contradictory because it's saying that if you want freedom, you, you need to follow God. You need to follow God's word. Amen. Isn't, that, isn't that what Deuteronomy with 32, what we're reading, he said, he said I, I pray that you, I, I, I lay before you life and death. I pray that you choose life. So what God is saying, okay, you can, you can live whatever life you want, but if you want true freedom, if you want true, um, true blessing, you need to follow my ways. You need um, to follow yeah. my ways. Yeah. So that's what God is saying. So, so if, when we look at the tablet then, when we look at the word of God, Jesse, it's, it's moving by itself. Can you help me, Jesse? When it's moving by itself, it's moving. Oh, sorry, when, when, when God gave us the Torah, what he's saying is, if you want life in your life, if you want freedom, then follow my words. Amen. Then follow my words. Because remember, the, 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 when it is engraved, when you look at an actual engraving, there are borders, there are limits. So God is saying, when you obey the dictates of the limits, there, there is where you find true freedom. I know, I, like I said, it sounds uh, crazy, but, you know, good fences, they said, make good neighbors, right? If you have good fence, you know, you have good neighbors. So here God is saying, Rem remember Mount Sinai. It is said in their Jewish writing, Mount Sinai was temporarily transported to Mount Moriah. What is Mount Moriah? Mount Moriah is... Where where the, the temple uh, uh, stood or the temple will start will stand, Mount Moriah or Mount Sinai was the temporary holiness, and Jerusalem, Mount Moriah is the permanent holiness, from the aspect. So uh, when you think about it, the the land of Israel, the land of Israel. Listen, the land of Israel is God's land. It's it's a holy land. So when, so when you have the opportunity to visit Israel, it's not like you're, you're coming into a, another tourist destination. This is not a tourist destination. This is God's land. Imagine that. Amen. Yes. So therefore, every step that you make in that land, think about it. Every breath that you breathe in that land, every tree that you touch, every fruit that you eat that came out of that land, that is holy. Why? Because the land is the Lord. It is the Lord. And, and the children of Israel, they are like tenants. God said, okay, you yes. live here. But this is God's land. We, again, yes. we should not, you know, when we go to Israel, let's not treat it as another tourist destination. Because you are literally entering the land of God. It is holy. That's Everything God. there is holy. That's and we God. should... We should we should uh, walk in awe that you know that even the air that even the air there is different. That's why can you imagine, you know, even the Torah teaching there is 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 at a higher level. Can you imagine when Yeshua will come and teach us the Torah from Jerusalem? And then what will that like be like? Wow! Say hey, wow! Wow! A star. And uh, whenever everybody is coming to the airport, all the Israeli will welcome you. And they said, Baruch Haba. It means welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. Amen. Amen. And it's a holy land. We're going to go to Israel. Okay. So uh, let me move to the next slide. So there's a... So there's a pattern. So here, I, I, I want to show you very quickly, but you need to understand that the weekly Shabbat is a pattern. It's a pattern. Why? What happens? Every week, you know, God said every day is common. And then on the seventh day, he hallowed it. And what do we do? We study the Torah. The feasts are what? They point to the birth of the Yeshua, the coming, the first coming, the, and the second coming again. On what happens on the the eight is a feast of tabernacle. There's, remember, there's there's uh, uh, there's seven. There's eight feasts, and uh, eight is is a number of of uh, of uh, eternity. So 
Rambam comments that the comparison between Shemitah and Shabbat is that both uh, bear the testimony to God's creation. We're going we're gonna to read scriptures related to that, that he created the universe in six days and he rested on the seventh day. That is why only in Shemitah, not in any other festival, is especially linked to Shabbat. The seven years of the Shemitah cycle alludes to the 6,000 years of mankind's history and will be climaxed by a seventh millennial, which will be a period of peace and tranquility and more on that. So more on that. So remember, like the Shemitah, six thousand, you know, the Shabbat, six days you shall work and on the seventh is a, is a rest. The Shemitah, seven years you shall work the land. On the seventh year you shall rest. And now he's... he's He's uh, exponentially increasing it. Now, every year, every thousand years is one day unto the Lord. And on the 7,000th year, which we'll see, we are very close to it, is a Shemitah. Amen? It's a, a period of rest. So God, again, in Genesis chapter 2, this is the uh, correct scripture. The heaven and the earth was finished. And what happened? On the seventh day, God finished the work. And what happened, he, which he had made, he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made, and God blessed the seventh day. And, and here, and he hallowed it because that is, that, that in it, he rested from all his work and God, which God created, uh, in creating, had, uh, he had made. So, so God hallowed it, God blessed it. It's not man that blessed it. That's why God said, you know, the, the, the Shabbat is for all. It's not just, uh, and, he is, and then he, he, he commanded Israel to follow it as well, but even the more everyone. So here, uh, the mitzvah relating to um, living in the land, he, he works the field for six years. He could work the land. And on the seventh, he is given a forced vacation just like the regular Shabbat. So here in Leviticus chapter 23, verse three, six days shall your work be done, but on the seventh day is Shabbat, a solemn rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no manner of work. It shall be Shabbat unto the Lord in all your dwellings. Leviticus chapter 25, this is what we're reading today. He speaks to the children of Israel. You shall say to them, when you come into the land, which I give you, again, Talking about the land of Israel, it's not uh, it's not applicable to to the, the land of Korea, of the Korea. It's not applicable to the land of the Philippines. When you come into the land, keep the Shabbat of the Lord. Six years you shall sow thy field, and six years you shall prune thy vineyards and gather the produce. But on the seventh year shall be a Shabbat of solemn rest on the land, a Shabbat unto the Lord. Again, a Shabbat unto the Lord, you shall neither sow the field or you shall not prune thy vineyard. So, so here what happened is when the people neglected the Shabbat or the, the Shemitah, what happened is um, they ended up becoming cursed. They, be, they ended up becoming poor. So what happened is they ended up, uh, they ended up, <coughs> Selling their land, so so here it's 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 a picture of God's mercy again. That's why He gave the laws of jubilee. Why? Because for those that did not follow the the, the shemitah, you know, because they you know they were afraid, they you know they 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 they, they, they did not think that you know um, they can they can live without working for one year. So what did they do? They even though God blessed them. You know, uh, we're going to see there that there was a triple blessing that happened on the sixth year. Yes, but uh, the, the people who did not follow the Shabbat or the, 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 the Shemitah, they ended up losing the land, right? So, in, in, so immediately after the fall, remember, uh, why do we work today? Um, why do we work today? We work today because of the ground is cursed. We have to work today because of the sin of Adam, but we'll, we'll, we're gonna see here that uh, uh, God 
never intended for us to just uh, to, to 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 work to live like this. It's because of the consequences of the curse. We're going to we we'll talk about that more. But uh, it says, it says here that even though, so what happens today, and even back then, farming is very difficult job. You're up early in the morning before sunrise. You have to work. Uh, uh, long days plowing and planting and watering through acres upon acres of land, lots of walking back and forth. And on the harvest, you, you cut the wheat, you thresh the wheat, you store it, then you retire on the night. You are too tired to go and study the Torah. You're too tired to do anything as you have to wake up in the morning again and repeat it again. So what does God say? Okay, now you're a farmer, you've been working hard. I'm going to give you one year rest. I'm okay. going to give you one year to catch up and study, <laughs> and study the Torah so you can catch up. Wow. wow. Wouldn't that be great? Wow. You're being paid vacation. So what's the purpose of, well, uh, the purpose of the Shemitah? What is the purpose? Well, for one, for, from, from the basic level, it's a lesson in faith. Why? Because can you imagine if you if you if you have a retail store, you're open six days a, six days a week, then God says, "I want you to close your store for a year." A person has to really have a lot of faith and trust that God will provide for him. But God is saying, "Don't work the field." All that all all that practice the shemitah, I said, they never got hungry. They all got blessed. Can you imagine threefold, threefold year on the sixth year? Those that did not practice Shmita, that didn't have faith and trust in God, they questioned the logic. They trusted in their own abilities. They ended up in the long run poor and they lost their land and they later became slaves. So the, 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 the other miracle of Shemitah, remember, they had to store for three years. And in the, in the Torah, it says there that they were eating from the old. Why? Because the, the food that they stored never expired. Are you still with me? Amen. They never expired. Why? Because God miraculously Amen. preserved the food that they stored. Why? Because that food they needed for the, for the seventh year when they were resting, when they're studying the Torah, and they needed it on the eighth year when they're starting to plow, and they needed it on the ninth year so that so, so the, they, they provided for the sixth year, the, the, the seventh year, the eighth year, and the ninth year. So that when the ninth year came, they were ready to eat of the, the harvest. Wow. Say, wow. wow. So, so that is on the, on the, on the surface level. But uh, so, you know, you know, the, the land was cursed. It says in Genesis chapter 3, verse 17, remember, you know, why, why, why do we have to work? Why do we have to work today? Why do we have to work so hard today? Why? Because it says there, because, because, uh, because of the sin of Adam, curse is the ground for thy sake. Yes. With toil shall you eat all the days of your life. Verse 18, thorns also thistles shall it bring forth from thee. Thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In thy sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread. From thus art that are and thus you shall return. So, so we're here. We're seeing that, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the, because of the sin, which God never intended for us to work this hard. Yes. But because of the sin, it brought about curse upon mankind. So we are waiting. We are waiting for the, for, for the Messiah. Are you waiting for the Messiah today? Yes. We are waiting for the final gula, the redemption. Yes. We are in the Gemara. It says God created the world before mm -hmm. Adam sinned. It was a different world today than the world that it was. Right? So it says here, you know, for one year, you, you, what do they do? They rest from their hard work. What do they do? They study the Torah. So again, we're, we're, we're seeing the pattern here. So we're waiting for the Messiah. 
in the Gemara, in the, in the Jewish writing, it says, when God created the world before Adam sinned, it was a different world than the world today. The world of, uh, that we live in after sin, we cannot relate to the world that it was. Why? Because we were never there. Can you imagine your, your grandfather telling you, right, a story about their childhood? They, they said, you know, when, we, when I was a child, the movies were one nickel or, or a penny, right? One cent. And you, we're going to laugh at you. No, that's not true. How, how can it be one cent, right? So in other words, if, 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 if your grandfather tells you stories, you cannot relate to it. Why? Because you were never there. So, so aside from Adam and Eve, no one ever saw it. Even, even his children, they were driven out of the garden, right? It is like today, right? So when, 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 when your grandfather talks to you about uh, uh, watching black and white movies with no sound, we cannot relate to that. Even my children today, they cannot understand this cassette recorder that uh, you can tape you can tape the VCR. They they don't relate to it because they, they, they were never they were never born. They were not there when these things happened. So we cannot re rely uh, in anyone trying to explain to it to us why because it, this is foreign to us. So based on the oral tradition that was passed on from Adam to his children, down to us and down to the Jewish people, the earth was blessed. The earth was blessed. What, is that, what does that mean? That, uh, that the, the trees produced finished products. That means that, you know, again, you know, like, you know, the, the tree, can you imagine the tree produced bread? The tree produced donuts? <laughs> it, 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 was, it, it was ready to eat. You know, today, when you say, you know, you want bread, what do you do? You buy, it, you go to the store, but to create bread, it says there are 10 different processes to create bread. Number one, somebody has to plow the ground. Somebody has to sow the ground. Yes. Somebody has to plow it again. Yes. Then to water it and then to reap it. Yes. Then to thresh, separate the shaft from the wheat. And then the kernel, because most of the most of the wheat that is bo that is bo uh, grown is not edible. The good part is a small kernel, and then the kernel you have to crush it to get the, the to get the flour. And then when you finally get the flour, you need to add water and make dough, and then you have to bake it. So there you can see there are eleven <coughs> ten to eleven steps to make the bread, and yet. You know, we don't we take it for granted. You know, you, you, you don't have bread, you just go to the store and buy bread. But you, that understanding that there's a lot of process that went about creating that bread. Why? Why is that? Because the earth was cursed. We are living in the earth that is not the same earth that we are looking forward to. The, 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 the world we are looking forward to is we cannot even imagine. Can you imagine a tree growing a hala bread? And when we pick it, it's ready to eat. Can you imagine a plant that produces, they say you like steak, it produces steak. <laughs> it's ready to eat. So when, we, when Messiah comes, he will restore the blessed earth. He will restore the blessed earth. He will restore the blessed earth. Amen. No one will be running the field. No one will be needing to work. We don't need to work. Amen. Why? Because our full-time job, listen, in the millennial, our full-time job is to study the Torah with Yeshua. Yes. Wow. Say wow. Yes. Wow. Amen. We don't toil anymore. Amen. Don't, the earth will be blessed. All our needs will be met. And all we all, all the respect. It, it, you know, we, we cannot relate to it because if you're not a farmer, you, you, you cannot relate to the, the, the back breaking work. Just do your garden. Can you imagine? <laughs> I was digging some, you know, the dirt. 
and Eleanor was planting. It was hard work. But God said, when, when Messiah comes, he will relieve us of all that backbreaking work. Why? Because the earth will be blessed. It, the trees will produce food ready to eat. Yes. If you like donuts, even <laughs> it will it will produce the donuts that you like. Krispy Kreme donuts. Amen. So why is Shemitah called? We read earlier the Shabbat of the Lord. For the seventh year shall be Shabbat, a solemn rest of the land. It's called the Shabbat of the Lord. Why? So if you, the secret, the secret of the name of Hashem, remember, this is the holy name. This is the unpronounceable name. We are not supposed to pronounce this because this is holy. But if you understand the name of God, it, it connotes, this is the word, Haye, past, Hava, present, and yei, future. So God's name, within God's name, is the concept of past, present, and future. Why, when you think about the name of God, it, it, it invokes past, present, and future. It invokes eternity, right? The last three letters, I said, Hove, God is present. God is, you know, God is uh, past. God is future. So, Man. just like the passage say, I am the first one and I'm the last one. There is nobody in between. Say that nobody in between. Nobody in between. Which means God is here from the beginning. Amen. God is he's still here today. Amen. God is not going to go anywhere. See, God is not going to oh. go anywhere. He's here. In other words, God does not have an, an, an expiration date. He did not just show up in 1962. He's still, he was there then. He was there now. Now, and he will be there in the future. There is no concept of, oh, God was there and he left us, you know, and he left the world. No, he is in control. Say that he is still in control. Amen. Yes, Whatever yes. situation you're facing, you think, oh, you know, maybe God has forgotten me. No, God knows you. God knows the numbers of your hair. God knows your address. Don't worry. Amen. You're not lost in the mail. You're not lost in the system. He knows you. He knows you by name. Hallelujah. God is Haya, who was, Hove, he is right now, and Yei, ye, he will be. Shemitah called Shabbat, Lasha, you know, it, 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 Shemitah is associated with Shabbat because it is God's Shabbat. Because it connects us to the past, to the present, and we're going to see that. And it connects us to the future. It links the past, which is, which is when Adam, before Adam sinned, it's saying, you know, remember the Shabbat when I first established it in creation. Remember how, how the Garden of Eden was, where, where, the, where the earth was blessed. It produced food ready to eat. You don't need to do anything. All Adam needed to do was to guard, to guard it, to keep it, to keep it. To, to keep it, meaning to obey what God told him, eat of the fruit, eat of the fruit. And the, the Shabbat of today, what is the Shabbat of the day, the Torah? We are living in the Shabbat of the day, I wanna see that. And then we are looking forward for the Shabbat of the future when Yeshua will rule and reign, will rule and reign for a thousand years. We're gonna be learning Shabbat. Let's go. We're gonna see that Adam, when Adam sinned to the extent that we don't understand the world that was. We only understand the world as it was, as it is today, right? In Shabbat, we are required, say that, we are required, we are required. to eat three meals. There's no dieting in Shabbat. We eat the Shabbat dinner. We eat the Shabbat lunch. Sometimes they brunch. And then we eat the, the meal before the end of Shabbat. So the three meals corresponds to three famous Shabbats in our history. The first meal relates 
to the faith, to, to, to the to the God who created the world, it's called the Shabbat of Bereshit. In the beginning, the, the Shabbat in the beginning, where the first and the holiest Shabbat. Remember, he established a Shabbat and he made it holy. We just read it in Genesis chapter one or chapter two. And then there's another Shabbat, a perfect Shabbat. The Shabbat, when we receive the Torah, we are living in the, in the Shabbat of the Torah today. When we receive the Torah, it says the week we got the Torah on Shabbat, God spoke to us at, at, on, on Mount Sinai. We heard the, third, the 10 words from Shashem. That is a very high level. A high level. Can you imagine? They experience the presence of God. And finally, the third Shabbat, this is the Shabbat of the future. This is a Shabbat that we are looking forward to. When Mashiach, the Messiah Yeshua will come, it is going to be the longest Shabbat. Remember, the first Shabbat, it was one day. And now it's going to be a thousand years. The millennial Shabbat, which uh, Sister Melanie read to us, the millennial reign of the Messiah, the Shabbat of the, the, the Shabbat that... Uh, of the, the future that connects the present, the past, and the future. And that is the link of the, 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 the Shemitah. So here, um, if you don't remember, you don't know the scripture, 6,000 years or, or a year, it says here in Psalm 90, for you, from your viewpoint, talking about God, a thousand years is merely like yesterday or a night watch. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Moreover, dear friends, do not ignore this. With the Lord, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. So, so the rabbi tells us, again, this is from the, from the, from the Jewish writing, the world cannot exist more than 6,000 years. So he's talking about, you know, we are the, the earth, because remember that calendar only reaches 6,000. Why? Because they know that the Mashiach will return before the end of the 6,000 years. So let's assume the world will go till the end before Mashiach comes. But the bo holy book says that 6,000 years corresponds to a day of the week. For example, day one was Sunday, a thousand years. Day two was Monday and so on. So today we are on day six. We are on Friday. Say that we are on Friday. We are on Friday. So, so Friday we are at the person. Remember when does the, the day start? It starts in the evening. Then there was evening. And then there was morning day one, right? So if you if if you if you if you follow that logic, see that I'm following that logic. Therefore, we are entering we are entering the the, the Shabbat. We are entering the, the. In other words, before the, before the end of the year, the Shabbat will start. The seventh the seventh year will start. So. So here, what did, what did I do? So, so let, let, let me read what I wrote here. It says here, meaning that if it, that, that like the year 5750 in, I'm going to show you later, the year 5750 is about 3.30 p.m., which means we are almost at the Shabbat. The Shabbat means the return of the Mashiach. The Gemara says in the Jewish writing, whoever works on Friday, listen, whoever works on Friday, whoever toils on Friday will eat on Shabbat, which means all the preparation prior to the Shabbat we have to do. In other words, if you look at in Jewish homes, you know, if the Shabbat is at 7 p.m., for example, tonight or today, the Shabbat, at, yeah, I think it's about 8.35 or whatever. But you'll see them like going crazy. They're, they're preparing the food. They're preparing everything. Because why? Because the moment Shabbat hits, remember when, when Shabbat hits, are you still with me so far? Not yes. uh, with your hand. When the Shabbat hits, they stop working. In other words, if they forgot to plug the, the, the cooker, the crock pot, 
<laughs> they forgot to plug it and then Shabbat hits. They're going to eat cold soup for the Shabbat. Are you still with me? Yeah. So it's a it's a preparation. It's it's a it's a pattern. Why? Because it says here, if you did not do anything before Shabbat, you're not gonna eat anything. Are you still with me? There is no longer any work. The world, the the world, the world today is where we prepare for Shabbat. Once we get to eternity, it says game over. Well, I want to do another good deed. I need to forgive my, my brother or my sister. I'm sorry, it is finished, it is done. It, it's the end, it's too late. This is the world where we prepare for the Olan Rabbah, the world to come, amen? Yes. That is the purpose of the Shabbat of the Torah today. We are, we are, we are, we are doing as much as we can. Why? Because we're preparing ourselves for the day of rest that will come. So here, um, what I did was, you can do this. You can, you can, you can calculate it yourself. Uh, if there is a, if if one day is a thousand years, so you can plot. There's 24 hours in the day, so I I put it here. Uh, like I said, at, uh, and how do you calculate the year? Let's say uh, at 3 p.m. is 25. <coughs> how do you know which year that is? What you do is uh, you take the 5625 and you remove the five and you add from the number. So let's say 5625 right there. Remember, you look at this number three here, uh, uh, the three, three o'clock p.m., right? Are you still with me? So 5625. You remove the five, the beginning five, and you add one thousand. Uh, you add one thousand two hundred forty. You add one thousand two hundred forty, and what you will add is there. If you add that, you will you will arrive at the year eighteen sixty five. So, so eighteen sixty five. Is that about, is that that correct? Is that the correct calculation? Wait one second. You add 1,240, sorry, 1,240, yes. So the year, the three o'clock in the, in the, in the six, in the, in the, in that calendar, 5625 is the year 1840. Are you still with me so far? Amen. So, yes. so here, what I did was, okay, so 6 p.m. is uh, normally, um, uh, normally Shabbat depending on where you are. Sometimes it starts at six, sometimes at seven. It, and we, since we're in North America, sometimes now it starts at eight. But if six o'clock was the dawn, it, I mean, we're preparing for Shabbat, right? Let's say Shabbat, in my calculation here, it's, I think Shabbat is at 7 p.m. So if, it's, if Shabbat is at 7 p.m., if you look at, if you calculate the calendar here, so you get uh, every hour is 41.6, 67 years so if you divide 467 uh 41.67 to uh there's how many 60 seconds in uh, in uh, in a minute or every every 60 seconds or every minute so anyway um 5750 for example again how do you know 5750 six o'clock is you deduct uh, you, you add uh, 1,240 on 750, remove the five, you will arrive at 1989. So 1989 could not have been the Shabbat because nothing happened in 1989, right? But if you look, look here further, in, if we are at 646, we are at 5782. And what's interesting is next September will be a seven year Shemitah cycle, a new Shemitah cycle. And the Shmita cycle will end on 6.58. And immediately after, based on my calculation too, you can calculate it from the time Yeshua declared the Yobel, the, the, the Jubilee, you will, you will have the following year will be a Jubilee. So it's talking about, it's talking about that you know the, the 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 you know we're not waiting till the end because remember the day starts the, the the seventh millennial will start in the evening of 
the 6,000 year, right? Are you still with me? Are you following the logic here? What I'm saying here is we're really close to the end. Say that we're really close. Everything seems to align on this period of time where we are close to the evil. We are, we are in the preparation time to the Shabbat. And God is saying, listen, when Shabbat hits, we will hit the 7,000 year. And when the 7,000 year starts is where he will come and declare the jubilee. We will have the 1,000 year reign of the Messiah. So everybody silent. You can you can uh, you can look at this calculation. You can. Uh, all I'm trying to say here is, you know, he's coming very soon. He's coming very soon. There's no time to play play around. You know, we we need to to, um, to we are in the 6.46 p.m. <laughs> we are minutes away, literally, from the Shabbat of the of, of, of the seven thousand year, the seventh year, the seventh millennia. We're 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 at the precipice of the seven millennia. And again, this is very consistent because remember, in the Jewish writing, you have to deduct two hundred ten from six thousand. That's their calculation. They said that two thousand and uh, two hundred ten is uh, deducted from six thousand. You will arrive at fifty seven ninety. 5790, which is again within, within the time frame of this calculation. So, so what am I saying today? We are nearing the seventh day. We are nearing the seventh day, people, which will usher the return of Messiah Yeshua. The coming Shemitah cycle brings us closer to that 7 p.m. start of the Shabbat. If the if the Shabbat will start at 7 or 6:59 or 7. We are there. Literally, we are at the gates. We are literally at the gates. Those that do not prepare for Shabbat, remember, you will have nothing to eat. There will be a, the, the, while there is still time, let us not stop preparing. Amen? So let us pray. Father, we thank you today. Father, we thank you. We thank you for reminding us of the coming Shemitah. The, the, the year of rest. And Father, but this is a greater Shemitah. This is the millennial reign of Yeshua the Messiah. For a thousand years, he will, re, he will transform the earth from the, from the cursed state that we are in to a blessed state so that we will rule and reign with you. We will learn the Torah from Jerusalem, from your holy land. And how the Torah will not just be, will, will no longer be written on paper or etched in stone, but it will be written in our hearts. Father, we look forward for the day when you, the, the living Torah, will teach us your Torah. And we pray for each family. Father, let this word come uh, go forth and people receive it with joy, receive it with urgency, receive it with with uh, with uh, with uh, not fear, but father with but but rejoicing because you have you have uncovered your secrets to us, Father. We thank you today. We thank you for the Yeshua Messiah, who is our Savior, who who Amen. died for our sins, so that we can be set free, free to serve you, free to worship you, free to make you the Lord of our lives, Father. And that's what we are doing today, and that's what we will do tomorrow and and uh, with your help to the to, to the, our last breath we thank you today father we thank you for your people bless each one we ask in yeshua the messiah and everybody amen 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 amen, amen. 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 yes pastor even and when i went to israel with my family we enjoyed the fruit of the land mm -hmm. the fruits the vegetables and even the fish from the sea of galilee was so delicious <laughs> All right. Very good for Just use the ears. Oh, Pastor, light the gone. Because outside is a thundering. Huh? Outside is a thunder. So on my on my place, the light gone. In, oh. Yeah. It's oh. all dark. Yeah, it's raining here too. Morning, Jesse. Yeah. Because they uh, they give a warning like about thundering. Oh, 
Yeah. We need an umbrella. Oh, we need an umbrella. <laughs> <laughs>